I recorded a consumer corner video, but I'm not really fond of how it turned out. A lot of the points I made were okay, but I just kind of rambled for too long. So I was thinking this will be part two. <clears throat> I think this will fit better as a part two because this will be reviewing the prices of cameras um, on eBay because that's that's where I shop for cameras is on eBay because there's a pretty good spread of people who are trying to sell like their cameras, trying to sell like their parents' cameras, or there's actual camera sellers. So as you may know, is someone I used to work for was a camera seller. So let's do eBay on incognito so hopefully it doesn't like log me into my account and everything weird like that and we can just we can just go straight for whatever um let's start with like in my mind what a beginner camera beginner enthusiast might look into something like a canon ae1 and we're just what we're going to do is go through prices of these things and i'll talk about why you will want to avoid whatever. That's where I talk about like this might offer you the same as this for a lot less money. So hopefully this is a little bit more instructive to see the pricing of things. Uh, we're gonna do buy it now because the bidding ones I would avoid. I mean, okay, on certain models you can bid. I'm not, and honestly you can do whatever you want, so. I'm just, in my experience, like, bidding on things, especially if the price is super low to begin with, and there's only like a couple bidders, and it's not like a very popular camera, I'd say jump into it. But if it's a Canon AE-1, and the bidding starts at like 50 bucks, that's gonna raise up pretty quickly, um, and you just don't wanna get sucked into that. I would go for a for sure thing, so I'd click buy it now. I always avoid all these sponsored ones, because these are usually, like professional sellers and they have their prices like artificially raised to the extent that they can and especially you can see here when they have x amount sold now the good thing about this and this is where how i buy things will differ from how you or someone else may buy things is that i'm looking for deals okay and i also know for a fact that like i can really get cheap stuff because I know how to fix it if something's broken. But if you're looking for a for sure thing, then you might want to like, if your heart is set on an AE1 and you don't want to worry about it, you just, you're fine with spending that money, then go for, go for something like this. $294.99 plus 20 bucks shipping. Comes with a lens, comes with the camera, working perfect, should be good. And something like this, if it doesn't work well, You'd have to check the hot swap batteries there. You'd have to check with the individual seller to make sure that you can do returns. But if you get it, if it's not something you like, then you can hopefully do returns. So that's something to look for. However, for the case of trying to spend the least amount of money, for trying to like not spend 300 bucks on a camera, which I would not recommend spending $300 on an AE1. I don't think it's worth it. About a year ago, these were going for 200 at most, and I think that that's also still a little bit expensive, to be honest, uh, just because there's so many things that can go wrong with them. But something like this, 165. Uh, of course, that is also with the $20 shipping. That's something you want to check out for because sometimes they'll put this like super low price, and then the shipping is ludicrous. Something like this would probably be a good bet. The other thing you want to be aware of, if you are like dead set on, you want an AE1, because maybe that's what your mom or dad used, or your uncle, aunt, grandparents used an AE1, and you want to like, you know, relive that, then I think that's fantastic. But just make sure that you're very careful about this right here, where it says program because they'll really try and sneak that one in here. And then what they do is they have a picture here is of the AE1, but this is saying AE1 program. So you'd have to talk to the seller and or kind of figure that out. But <clears throat> the average price of these is in that kind of $200, $300 range. And if it's coming with a lens, like that's a pretty good deal. Body only for a hundred bucks. Uh, Depends on the quality of the body. 
it's not terrible, but uh, I think this is probably where you want to be. Um, 85 bucks, but this is also untested parts only. So that's this is kind of depressing, honestly. <laughs> 150, wow. Plus 40 bucks shipping. 50, 14. Okay, this is this is the steel right here. But this is again a program. So it doesn't seem to be a lot of AE ones straight up. So let's look at let's look at Canon A ones. Let's see where we're at with these. We'll do buy it now, like I said. And yeah, 132 for the body, no grip. Two. 88 for this, uh, I don't know, okay, see, this is, pro 150 is probably where you want to be in this neighborhood, if you're looking for the camera, the grip, and a lens, this is probably going to be good, 150 plus 20 bucks shipping, so, what is that, like 170-ish, thereabouts, taxes and stuff, because they also add on taxes, so, I would say that's probably going to be a good bet. You can find something like that. That is a, a steal. Um, but the other thing, too, you have to keep in mind is, like, you could also just get something like this, like film camera body only, okay, for 50 bucks plus 35 shipping from Japan, which is sometimes good. This one is broken, though. Yep, yep, this is indeed broken. Okay, so sometimes Japanese sellers will sell broken things for less money, but then they will be kind enough to highlight what is broken. For instance, right here, the cover for the shutter speed selector is broken. Not a huge deal. The camera will work perfectly fine without it. Cosmetically, it does not look great, but that's, you know, whatever. And then it's missing a grip, which isn't a huge deal at all. The grip, in my mind, has always been like an additional thing, but some people view that as completely necessary. So, but you can find grips online for not too much money. So something like this for 50 bucks plus 35 shipping. So that's like, it's at 87 something, 87, 85. God, I'm good at math. Anyway, that's probably going to be a great deal right here. And then what you can do is go into here and do FD mount lenses. And then you can find whatever focal lengths that you really want. Now I would do, again, buy it now. Uh, condition will do, no, oh, let's see. Uh, and this is where having some relative knowledge about these things is really helpful because you really get caught up into, well, I need to have the Canon mount lens. But sometimes they're not great. <laughs> like sometimes the lenses are not very good. Uh, but because it says Canon, they go for more than the third party lenses. Like for instance, this is a $40 lens because it's a Canon 51.4, as is or for parts only. It's actually not too bad of a deal. Depending on what's wrong with the camera or the with the lens, it might not be fixable. Versus something like this where it's a 28 2.8, but because it's a Lentar Super, which I've literally never heard of, works perfectly fine I'd imagine 34.75 so or something again like this 25 bucks plus 20 ish shipping so anyway there's like there are deals out there you just kind of have to know what you're looking for and if you're fine with a third party lens which I I think you should be because they're not terrible to be honest they're really not terrible yeah, you just spend a little bit of time looking. The other thing you need to be worried about when you're looking for lenses is sometimes you'll get like a lot of lenses like this. And so you click on it, you're like, oh, $10, that'd be sick. So click on it, and I guarantee, guarantee this is what's going to happen. So all of these lenses, yep, from $10 to 80 So select which one you want, and you go through, like, oh, I want, I want this 51.8. Okay, so that's 40 bucks. That's actually not too bad. That's very reasonable. Hmm. But the two-time teleconverters, these are the ones that are always $10. And some people will like lump this in with other lenses, and they'll say like, oh, it's a it's a lens, but it's just a teleconverter, which is fine. Like if you want to use the teleconverter, that's great. But you can't use that without a lens. So you're just buying another thing. But then this, yeah. So this is $79. It's 80 bucks for this. Good lens, for sure, don't get me wrong, but it's just a little bit, uh, 
misleading when you see $10. Like, oh, sick, I can get a 50 millimeter 1.8 for 10 bucks, and you, you can't, so. Um, anyway, that's something to be interested in. Like, maybe just find a body like this for a relatively reasonable price, and then go find a third-party lens or find a separate lens. Or, again, just get a kit for... 250 bucks, you can get the camera and the lens in mint condition. And again, some of these sellers are really reputable and you can trust them. Others are, ooh, wait a minute. Oh no, this is garbage. Never mind. Oh, but I kind of need one of these. Anyway, sorry, this is, I need to stop looking at eBay every time. Okay, so that's kind of it. Um, I don't know. I think these are. In my mind, this is a better deal than an AE one or an AE one program. So if you're going to spend like, if you're going to spend three hundred dollars on a camera, do this. Don't don't get an AE one. If unless you like again, unless you really really want to, then do it. But I would probably just spend either the same amount or a little bit less. Get an A one with a lens. I think it's much better. So let's go to uh, one of my least favorite cameras ever. Minolta X700. Now I'm in the minority when it comes to this because like people love these cameras and Okay, people love these cameras. That's fine. You feel however you want to about them Really genuinely don't let me influence Your feelings or opinions towards things. I'm just going to tell you the facts. I don't like them <laughs> And I don't like them for very rational reasons um and then also a few irrational ones. But for one, the electronics on these are not great. They have, I believe there's three capacitors. I believe they're all different sizes. If not, there's two different sized capacitors in there. And they control very weird systems in the camera where I don't think capacitors would really be needed. But anyway, those go bad after a while. The acidity or the acid would within them leaks and can ruin the circuit. So even if you did have somebody replace the capacitors, they didn't do like a full cleaning of the circuit board, you could still end up with a partially separated capacitor and it would, the whole thing would break. So for that reason alone, I'm iffy towards recommending these to people. Also they're plastic bodied. Also I think that they're way too expensive for being essentially a ticking time bomb. And you kind of see that here, like 130, uh, 145, 200, 70, plus $20 shipping. I would not do this at all. I would avoid these at all cost. Um, just because, like, I don't, I can't trust this camera, and I, I don't recommend people to get these cameras because like you just can't trust them. And so the, the point would be like, okay, well. Romping Bronco says I can't trust them, so I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna buy this $200 one. It's near mint. It should be good. 200 bucks plus 35 shipping. Has the motor drive. Has a 51.4. This is a great kit. This is something that I can trust because this is a reputable seller. Whatever, whatever, and they'll do free returns. So you get this whole kit for you know 240 bucks, right? And hypothetically, you're shooting with it, and you're outside. It's sunny. It's bright. It's hot. Whatever. And then all of a sudden, the uh, thermistor, which I believe is the temperature-related resistor, uh, shuts down and the camera breaks and dies. <laughs> and now you're just out 240 bucks. And I believe that uh, some people will allow returns for that. But it's just one of those things where if you get a cheap one, like this $45 one, for instance, which it does say for parts or repair, so let's not, let's not do that example. But... I, there's okay the $70 one I think is the cheapest just camera that there is right now it's not for parts repair so say you get the $70 one all right I'm getting a steal it has the lens and the flash 70 plus $20 shipping so 90 bucks for all this fantastic much cheaper than the 241 this is not as reputable from the seller because it's probably you know someone's old camera kit they just want to get rid of it okay I'll put it at this price so somebody will, will buy it and if you really want this camera, go for it, please, by all means. Like, don't let me stop you. I'm just trying to give you some facts. Um, the, the point being is though, this is not one that you can really skirt out with. Like, 
I don't know. I just I see this and I'm like I am immediately turned off. I'd much rather you or anyone else watching just go to here. Just do this. For 75 bucks or best offer, you can get a Minolta SRT 101 35 millimeter SLR camera with a lens. Camera's presumably working. This is literally just the first thing that my eye was drawn to. So let's let's do buy it now. Let's do the the same song and dance here. 45 bucks plus ten dollars shipping camera lens you got the 70 to 210 i think this is a vivitar series one which those are pretty solid lenses the series one vivitars i believe have one of the best lens emulsions uh glass emulsions i should say and look at this camera this is clean as heck um, yes, it's missing the little bumper here for the advanced lever, but I mean, come on. Like this to me has, it doesn't have the auto programming settings as the X100, but for significantly less money, significantly less money. Oh, it's in bend. Ooh, I might hold on to that one. Uh, for significantly less money, you can get a better camera. Look at this. Oh my goodness, 1149, are you kidding me? Oh, this one's in Arizona. Oh, oh I could have just picked it up, bummer. Oh my, okay, for real, like this is ridiculous. And what's it gonna say, for parts are not working? What is, the parts are not working? Lens is in great shape, physical functions that can be tested without film, do function, lever below SRT1 is missing, very little dust seen through lens sold as is. Oh, yeah, the uh, self-timing for 20 bucks yeah this is this is the kind of stuff i'm talking about if you know what you're looking for which hopefully you continue to watch my channel i can help you walk through this but like stuff like this is so exciting to me because look at this totally working camera yeah you don't have a self timer lever but oh well you don't need that to use this camera like this is this is perfect condition the lens is fantastic this is one of Minolta's best lenses, best looking lenses, I think. The I think this is the 51, 5517. I mean, it it does not get any better than this. Stuff like this is out there though. That's all I'm saying. Stuff like this is out there, and I'm hoping that a video like this will help illustrate just how good the deals are. Minolta, I think, is probably one of the less refuges for uh for getting a decent beginner camera because these SRTs are pretty much built like tanks. The lenses, the glass, uh, the MD glass has always been fairly inexpensive, which is fantastic. But you just have to know what you're looking for. So definitely, definitely keep this in mind. These are all like, these are bargains, but also I feel like this is what it should be. This is what a beginner film camera should cost, 70 bucks. Again, I understand that we're all trying to make money, we're all trying to like operate businesses, but at the same time, like, this isn't always, it doesn't have to be, let me get as much money as I can and get out. Like, we should be trying to cultivate some kind of community. Like, the more people that invest in film photography, the better it becomes, I think. So, that's my little rant for the day. Um, we'll go through a couple more real quick. So we'll do the Olympus OM-1. This is one that I hardly ever really talk about just because up until recently I didn't have one and now I have two. I have a lens coming in soon so I'll be doing a walkthrough video with that and go for a photo walk or something with it. These are tricky for me, I'll be honest, because I've seen the worst condition OM-1s in my entire life. I've seen terribly conditioned Olympus cameras. So I have a really hard time recommending them because of that reason. Um, the lenses for them are always like kind of expensive and if you find a cheap one, it's usually f because it doesn't work very well. But something like an Olympus OM-1, if you can find one for, again, that like $100 mark, like this would probably be a steal. 100 bucks, camera, lens, and it works. I would go for that. 125, it's still pretty good, plus 1370 shipping. Not bad, not a bad deal. Uh, 121, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, 200 bucks with the lens, it's a 51.4. So if you really wanna like spend that extra chatter, get a nice lens, then go for it. But I'll be honest, this 51.8 is 
really good. Like it's a great lens, and I, I'm not a huge, not a huge Olympus guy, but this is a killer lens. I think something like this, OM1, the black one, as is, well, maybe not. I don't know what the as is is for, but if you can find a black OM1, 120 bucks plus 1650 shipping with a lens, jump on this. If this listing is still here by the time I post this video, and you go search on OM1s, and this comes up, buy it, please, so I don't have to. <laughs> but yeah, that is that's that is that camera. Now let's look at uh, this one, my least favorite camera. This is weird, this keeps popping up. If somebody really wants this bot, these Polaroid 600s. Um, yeah, okay, so OM10s, these are weird. Obviously, they're very weird, I think. Uh, people like them, so I'm not gonna like dog on them too much, but there's a few things I think you should keep in mind when you're looking for them, is if you get something like this, this is just an OM10 with a lens, this is fine. However, you have no manual control, and I'll show you why, because, yeah, this one does not come with it. So, right here, I'm hovering, can I zoom? Okay, yeah, right here, a little connector slides right into there. And I will now show you what that looks like because this other one has it. This. This is the shutter speed, the manual shutter speed attachment. Yes, there is an attachment, the manual adapter attachment, it is, in my mind, one of the biggest blunders I think ever. I understand like this is meant to kind of be a beginner, like consumer camera, but oh, it's terrible. And then also this system here, uh, I despise because there's like little plastic notches that this is supposed to sit in. So it'll click into place, but it's very often that that kind of erodes. So this thing will just kind of like flop around. It's very annoying. And then the battery check, uh, sound is very obnoxious too. So if you're like, so if you're on, um, if you have it on on or whatever, and you accidentally like move it and it like swings around to the check, it's like ee terrible, absolutely terrible. So I avoid that at all costs. But anyway, so something like this, eighty bucks, it's not too bad, I guess. But again, I just think your money could be better spent. I think something like an OM1 or an OM2 are just as feasible as this, and yeah, you don't have the auto functions, but the electronics on these are also known to be quite faulty, um, and the fixes for it that I've read about have just not been, uh, they don't fill me with confidence, we'll say. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, that's the Olympus line of cameras. These are not terrible prices, I'll say, like 80 bucks, 20 bucks, but this one will not work, but, uh, hundred bucks with camera and lens, I'd say it's probably kind of fair, but at that point I would recommend going with an OM-1 instead. So let's do, let's do K-1000s because those always kind of make me sad. <laughs> I'm glutton for punishment here. Also my typing speed is just an atrocity. It is so slow. Race a turtle and lose. Okay. So the very first ones, again, we're looking at the sponsored 691 sold. Again, if this is something that you just want to get because, you know, so-and-so had a K1000, then yeah, go for this. Like, you know, 250 plus 20 bucks shipping, so 270 camera lens, potentially a strap. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess that's fine, but I don't know. It's a lot if you're asking me, but whatever. Um, but yeah, if that's what something you want to do, don't let this dissuade you. But again, let me just say that that is way too much for this camera. Oh yeah, this is... <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Oh my god. How hilarious is that? Oh my goodness. Okay, okay. Let me peel back the curtain a little bit. Allegedly, this is a this is somebody that I know. Allegedly, 
Six sold in the last 24 hours, that's great. Eight available, 937 sold. This is a business, okay? This is straight up just a business. The, the price here does not reflect the actual value of the camera, okay? It does not at all. It is priced that way because whoever runs this business knows that that's how much they can sell it for, okay? There you know, that, that is how the sausage is made here. And the very fact that there is a KM, <laughs> a picture of a KM on their K1000 listing. Oh my lord, what a beautiful day. This doesn't make me sad. It does make me sad because this is a ludicrous cost for the camera itself. Other things you want to look for, especially if you're looking for K1000s, um, this hole right here. This is a screw mount. Basically what this is, is this is the plastic top. And so you can see there's this little dent right there. That's never going to come out. Um, the plastic bodies, unless you find like a really good one, which they are rare, but they exist, they show a lot more signs of wear and tear. And you can tell that because, well, you can tell it's a plastic top because of the screws on the side. The metal top does not have that. And then also by the bottom. The bottom might be a little bit more easy to tell because, yeah, here it is. It looks like this. So. There's also one, two, three, four, five screw holes in the bottom. Where, and then also the original ones were assembled in um, Hong Kong, I believe. And the plastic ones are assembled in China. So that's if you really want to get into the weeds. But if you see something like this, you're like, oh, this looks fine to me. But just know, just know that uh, if you were to buy one of these, this is not the camera. This is not the camera you get. Okay, you get a totally different camera. And it could be that same quality or it could not be. Are you kidding me? This is a this is a goof. Look at this. There's a decorative piece that sits right there and it's broken. They oh my god. How embarrassing. Not only the KM photos alone are pretty embarrassing, but also this piece is broken. There's a dent in the camera and it's broken. And this this is this is this is their stock photo. This is what they want to represent, their Pentax K1000 that they are selling. And it's broken. Wow, that is embarrassing. Okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> God. Um, all right, so let's see if we can do... Anyway, um, yeah, this. Uh, buy it now? Yeah, that's weird. Okay. So sometimes, I don't know, sometimes eBay's weird. Sometimes it will like think that this is what you're wanting. So it's gonna show you like, here's a thing that's going to be uh, auctionable, but I would stay away from that. I would keep looking for the buy it now. So something like this. On paper, this is a pretty good deal. This is 50 bucks, thereabouts and you get a camera, it looks like three lenses, a strap, and a flash unit. Nine times out of 10, the flash is fried, so I wouldn't bank on that. And then also, it doesn't even matter because you can tell that the hot shoe is just not non-existent, does not exist on the camera. The shutter button looks like it belongs in a coral reef, and the lenses look like the JCPenney special. Yeah, oh. I don't want to talk about this one. Don't buy something like this. You might see this price and be like, oh, you know, 50 bucks, that's that's a that's a good deal, but not for this. This is the kind of thing that you get and it makes you sad. Like this is making me sad to look at, but it will make you more sad if you spend, because like, I don't know, 50 bucks is kind of a lot of money for some people. So you might not want to spend that much money and then also potentially need to repair that. So I would just avoid that. But then what you can do is click on something like this and then pop down here onto similar sponsored items. Now, sometimes this is hit or miss and uh, you can kind of sift through here a bit, but look at this. Now this is an auction item here. We've got four days left. So this price is probably gonna blow up considerably. 
but 62 bucks for the camera and the lens. This is perfect. This, is, this should be what they just cost. Oh, the other thing about the metal tops is that they have this uh, decorative piece right here, whereas the plastic tops just sit in a well, basically. So the, uh, I don't know, the rewind crank basically just sits in a well of the camera that's a similar color as this. So real nerdy shit, but I prefer this look personally. Um, I'm not taking any shots at you, Jeff. I know you like your plastic one, but whatever. Um, anyway, so that's that's pretty much it for the K1000. Like these are just ludicrous prices. Okay, I, I gotta wrap this up because this is getting way too long. So we're gonna talk about the KM real quick. Camera, lens. It's coming from Smyrna, Tennessee. Clean, okay? Buy one of these, seriously. Do it for yourself. Buy one of these so you don't spend $250 on a K1000 that they don't even have the decency to put the same pictures of. That's just absurd to me. Anyway, that's just absurd. And I get it for like the, the individual seller who only has like four or five cameras they're trying to maximize the profits, but something like that other company I was showing you, they've sold over almost a thousand K1000s on that listing alone. And a company like that has four or five K1000 listings. Some probably have better reviews than others, but they have multiple listings and they've sold probably around four or five thousand K1000s at that price. And also, a company like that does not pay their workers very fairly. That's all I'll say, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, they require a lot of work for $17 an hour, allegedly. All right, I, uh, I wanna make this last little bit very short because this video is gonna be pretty long, I think. Um, I want to clarify two things. One, I apologize for not being in a corner, and this being the Consumer Corner series. I will try and remedy that situation next time. Two, uh, I talked recently about the KM and the K1000, and I also mentioned the KX. Now, I want to talk about that very specifically because the KX, uh, and I've touched on this very briefly, was one that was viewed as the flagship premier model. Now, I think it was. Uh, definitely has the features to claim to be that, um, but also, god damn, that's actually really cheap. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so this seems a little bit more accurate, and this is with a third-party lens too, but anyway, the thing about these, and the thing about Nikons in particular, and why I don't really mention Nikons as far as good beginner cameras, is because these were more marketed towards professionals, okay? So people are, people who bought these uh, probably want to also sell them for higher price value because, well, I bought it for a lot, so it's still worth a lot. Again, if you're looking for a KX, then, you know, 150 is probably gonna be where you're at with that. And it's actually not too bad, to be honest. For having more features than a K1000, which goes for 300, this with a 5518 ooh for 163 this is a good deal yeah not bad light meter not working properly viewfinder has some dust in the prism scratches scuff stains i mean if you can get over those like minor cosmetic issues that's not a, not a bad deal actually for the lens alone that's that's pretty cool that's something to be to be wary of i would say it's just that something like this nikon's those are probably gonna be priced out a lot heavier, even though, you know, say what you will. But, uh, I don't know, 330, that is way too much. It's hard to go wrong with this, okay? Like this is, that is clean. That's real clean. Ooh, and with the case, dang, son. Okay, and it's from Vegas. That's another thing too, sometimes. Not all the times, but sometimes I like to look at where they're from. So this one's from Las Vegas, Nevada, which, you know, say what you will, but uh, that's not Florida. 
Now, nothing against Florida or any of like the southern states or even Oregon or Washington. Anywhere near the water, uh, Japan, sometimes, sometimes, we'll circle back to that, but anywhere near the water, you might want to avoid, uh, especially if you're going to go for a cheaper one that's not from a company, like an individual camera seller from Tampa or from Miami or something like that. It is likely, especially if it's like an older camera, like a Spotmatic, that there's going to be a good amount of mold somewhere in the camera, like some kind of life forms, because uh, that's just that's how that happens. So I would be wary about that. Whereas something like Vegas, you don't have to worry about because it's in the middle of the desert. It might be a little bit dusty, but there's not going to be moisture in Vegas, uh, except like I don't know. And then some Japanese sellers, not all of them, but some of them will say that it's mint condition, but it's it's really not. Like, I've seen that before where it's just, they've got salt water lining the inside. Like, they'll, they'll clean the outside of the camera, but sometimes the inside is just fried completely. And most people are none the wiser. I just take apart my stuff when I get it so I can make sure it looks good. Um, so I've caught that a couple of times, but they're usually pretty good about repairs if you end up in that situation. If you wanna see something that's really depressing, um, contacts T2. Okay, we'll do this. Okay, thirteen hundred dollars, right? Let's let's check this. Four parts are not working. Seven hundred dollars for a paperweight. Five seventy-five for a paperweight. Contacts T2. This is a different one. Yeah. No. Okay. One hundred and ten for a paperweight. So eBay's good, I think. eBay's a good place to go because you do get the range of sellers. You get people, you get large companies that you can trust to some variable of a degree um, that they will honor their warranty because their business is operated through this. And so if you give them like a bad review, you can open up a claim or whatever. They don't want that, so they will help you out in any way that they can. All of this comes from my experience and from dealing with these people regularly so I'm hoping that watered down version of my experiences with buying and selling stuff on eBay, that I can help you guide you through this beginner process. Cause it's, it's challenging. Like when you're looking at like, let's see, I'll just go back to the Canon AE1, slowest typing speed in the game. When you're looking at this, this is overwhelming. Like this is like, oh my God, this is a lot. Okay, this is this is a lot to go through, and you're searching through like what's the difference between this and that and this and that. Like what what am I what am I looking at here? Like this is just a lot. There's all these numbers, and if you're scrolling down, you're seeing 294, 308. Wow, 258, 225. Oh, 125. This is very cheap. I'll grab this one. You get caught up in all right. Well, well, because this is 125, this is probably just the cheapest one out there. But you don't see whatever else needs to be seen here. And you could miss something that's $65 or best offer because you spent this money already. Or you just see the very first one. You're like, oh, well, this this has got to be the price. So I buy this. Or you're like, okay, well, this is a little bit cheaper than this. So I'll buy this. But this isn't even an AE1. This is a program. So it's just stuff like that that I think you should look out for. These little sponsored things here. This is something that I would be wary of because... That's a business. And like again, if you want to do that, 100% fine. Uh, don't let me dispel you from making any like large decisions like that. I just, I want to put the information out there that maybe something like that you could probably find somewhere else. These are things that you should be able to buy without having to budget for. And yet the prices are that you have to budget for. It's the same thing with point and shoots, which will be a separate video, because I have a whole rant on that that I'm gonna really try and deliver in a cordial way. But really, at the end of the day, because this rant has gone on for long enough, I just want more people to get into it, because I think the more people that are trying things out, seeing like, oh, I like this, or maybe I don't like this, the better, the more the art can advance, the more, the more people get into it, the better the results can be. It's when you only have like a few voices in the room, you lose a lot of the nuances that new beginners and other creative people can bring in. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Shoot me an email. 
if you just want to say, hey, do you think this is smart if I buy this? Or, hey, I bought this. What do you think? Or I'm thinking about getting this. Do you have any recommendations? Please, I would be happy to help. I, I really genuinely would be happy to help. I've not been super great about keeping up with my emails because of the move and stuff like that, but I will try and get better about that moving forward. But really, just don't spend $400 on a K1000. Don't spend $500 on a K1000 because they're beautiful, lovely cameras. Not worth that price, though. Anyway, I hope that you learned something. I hope this helps in your decision-making process. If this is something you have more questions about, again, please comment, ask them away. I would all the time in the world to answer these kinds of questions. So um, I hope this helps. Consumer Corner, episode two, buying cameras off eBay. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new Consumer Corner episodes and all other repair related content. And yeah, I think that'll do it. So catch you on the next one.